Greet the lads and lasses, how we're doing and welcome back to the channel and actually welcome back to the channel. It feels like it's been actually a, a quite a long while since I've uploaded. I think it's been about four days or something. Honestly, that's just because of how hard I've been working. But I, sorry for the lack of content in the past couple of days, of course. We had no live watch along for the game. We didn't have a match preview for the game. And of course, for that, I was out for Mother's Day. I took my mum and my grandma to St. James's Park for Sunday lunch. That was on me and I hope they enjoyed it as well because that wasn't cheap whatsoever. Make sure you like up this video and all the videos to come. I need to pay that one back but uh, no all in all I hope all your mums had a fantastic day but we are back with another video and it's a video what I don't like to make whatsoever how pardon the pun safe is Eddie Howe at Newcastle United now take this with a pinch of salt this is not whatsoever me coming out here and saying Eddie Howe needs to be sacked he's lost the dressing room he's done all this let's just put this to bed and I'll probably mention it once more in the video but there's not another man I want managing this club than Eddie Howe for so many reasons I know that's not everyone's cup of tea people want the likes of Jose Mourinho they want Pep Guardiola we are ambitious fans I can't agree with that but the way Eddie Howe is so discreet in the media the way he treats the players one to one as if he's their father what he done for the last season first cup final in 20 plus years first Champions League um visit in 20 plus years since 2003 I believe it was what he's done for already he's building a legacy at Newcastle United but it's fair to say we could be out of three cup competitions in less than a week's time we're down to the eight he had for our FA Cup quarter final I don't want to be too negative but I'm pretty sure I can guess what the result is going to be there we could be out of three cup competitions and we could be mid-table in the league it's fair to say it's not all sunshine and rainbows so we're going to get into this video ladies and gentlemen how safe is it how in Newcastle United without further ado let's get into the video I've got just about five things here, which what I think is going wrong with Newcastle United at the minute. Three of them are kind of Eddie Howe's fault, which it actually breaks my heart to say that, man. You know, like, it's becoming annoying now and frustrating that these things are becoming a regular occurrence and we can see it in the ground. For example, Dan Burns starting and the, the fans inside St. James's Park, who are the loyalist fans there is. You go to the games, you spend the money, are now chanting for Tino to come on. Now, that I can actually push to the side a little bit, which we'll touch upon later as well, because... Dan Byrne, for me, isn't actually to blame. We'll see why in just a minute. But before we get into the video, like if you do enjoy, and of course, subscribe if you're new around here. Let me know down below if you agree with what I'm saying and the points I am making later on in the video. And of course, let me know if you think anything down below. And of course, I will discuss it with you. But just before we get into that, we've also got some injury news on Anthony Gordon and Harvey Barnes. So Anthony Gordon had to get substituted. He was replaced by Jacob Murphy for our 3-2 defeat at Stamford Bridge last night. But Harvey Barnes didn't even make the squad. The club came out and said that it was a minor hamstring injury now he's not back to the international break which is reported by the male sport but I think that's worded a bit badly he only misses Manchester City away for our FA Cup quarter final then he's back straight after that of course there is a big break so fingers crossed he is really well and fit but that's Harvey Barnes in yet again not looking good whatsoever however on Anthony Gordon Eddie Howe actually said this and this is worrying even Eddie Howe saying it's not good he said this we fear it's not looking good he's in a lot of pain but it's early days. It was a knee problem that came on gradually. I think some people said that this has been going on for quite a while now. Gordon wasn't 100% going into the game. Honestly, that's going to become a counter into the, uh, into the video as well. Don't play players that aren't 100% fit. One which we are really going to touch upon in just a second. But this is what I believe, finally, what I believe what's going wrong with Newcastle United at the minute. I've got five things right there. Or four things, I should say. One which is a little bit separate. It's not too much to touch on, which we'll speak about right now, which it isn't really a major thing whatsoever, but I've got three th main things straight after that. Sven Botman isn't looking up to pace whatsoever. Like I said, obviously, he's not the main reason I blame for all this. It's just something little to touch upon. He's not looking up to pace. His pace is gone. His strength doesn't look like it's there. And there's an obvious reason that I just really wanted to clear it up because people are still talking about it. He obviously still isn't 100% from that knee injury that he got. And it's really annoyed me because the medical staff, we can clearly see that the medical staff have not sort of went through that situation very well whatsoever. He was meant to come back at a set time. He got pushed back. Then that happened again. So it looked like his recovery wasn't going to plan. And I mean, we can say that on the pitch, obviously, as well. All the errors he's making, all of the, the just not getting there with his pace, it's not good whatsoever. And honestly... I think Jamal Lascelles, 100% 100 fit Jamal Lascelles, Fabian Shaw goes left centre-back, as Sven Botman needs to recover, all, all means be it, play Jamal Lascelles, because Sven Botman at the minute, he looks absolutely terrible, Chelsea was terrible, I can't remember what of our game it was, but honestly he's been really bad at the minute, and I feel for the kid as well, because it's not his fault, let him sit on the sidelines, where he can recover, but honestly, I think to fully recover, he actually will need surgery, it's not just sort of a rest him for a game, like we did at Blackburn, because obviously, that hasn't helped him yet again, now, 
there's three things which finally we are getting onto and I really need to get this off my chest because I feel like I've been biting my tongue because saying bad things about Eddie Howe, people take it so much out of context. Oh, you want him out? No, we don't. We are just discussing things with three things that I think Eddie Howe is actually getting wrong at the minute. Four or five months ago, I didn't think I'd ever be saying that. Number one, in-game management. This is starting to become a really, really big problem. And honestly, something I've picked up on, which I've not seen any other people say, he substitutes, that's not what I'm going to say yet, but he substitutes Institutions are not good whatsoever. He's taken off the wrong players at the wrong times. He's, for example, yesterday against Chelsea, he kept Sean Longstaff on the pitch. He took off the other two midfielders and Joe Willock and Bruno, who fair play, Bruno and Joe didn't have a good game whatsoever. But if you watch Sean Longstaff, it honestly felt like we were playing with 10 men. I'm getting on to him in just a second as well because he's been frustrating me so much. And I hate to say that as well. He's a Jordy lad. You don't want anyone to do better than the Jordies in that team. You want to prioritise them. Blake Big Dan Byrne. We absolutely love them. But we've got to face the facts. Them two are not good enough at the minute. Bit of a tangent there. We'll touch up on that. But the substitutions aren't great. And what I don't like about the substitutions, it's all well and good people saying, well, he's subbing these on at the wrong time. He's putting the wrong players on in wrong positions. It's all wrong. What I don't like... It's when we start Dan Byrne, for example, against Luton. That's just off the top of my head, but it's happened so many, many times. Dan Byrne makes two mistakes. We'll go 4-2 down. We are two goals behind to Luton Town. Then, Tino Livermento comes on. Tino Livermento, the 21-year-old kid, then replaces the 30-year-old Dan Byrne, who's basically the vice-captain, captain us against Chelsea, because, of course, of uh, Kieran Trippier's absence, is meant to take on that stability. Do you know what I mean? It should be Dan Byrne replacing the inexperienced kid. Dan Byrne is experienced. He should be sticking in that game. He's made two sort of errors. Why is the young kid now coming on when we're in a losing position? If we actually went and lost that game, his confidence would have went absolutely below the belt. It would have went rock bottom and against uh, Arsenal. Tino gets given one chance against Arsenal at the Emirates. Arguably one of the hardest places second or third hardest place to go into the Premier League. Uh, Tino drops a very bad performance against one of the best wingers in world football, Bakayo Saka, and then he's dropped for the next game. It, it, that is really, really uh, unfair at the minute, and that's where I'm getting on to favourites. <sighs> This, this is what's really been annoying me, ladies and gentlemen. It's something which I've been wanting to get off my chest for a very, very long time. But now I feel like the time is right. When we talk about favourites, there's two, maybe three with Miggy Elmron, but there's two main that come to our head. Two main players that come to our head, sorry. Sean Longstaff and Big Dan Byrne. Now, Big Dan Byrne, I can actually cut some slack for. It's not Dan Byrne's fault. He's getting picked week in, week out, getting skinned by these wingers. Eddie Howe's putting him in the system. It's actually... Like I said, Eddie Howe's fault that he's putting Dan Byrne in this system and it's not working. And I've seen some people say, well, Dan Byrne's vital to the, the system that we're playing. We'll play as a three back. I'm just going to ask you one question. Is that system really working if we've conceded the same amount of goals as Sheffield United in 2024? Sheffield United, arguably this Sheffield United, one of the worst teams in Premier League history. They are an absolute car crash of a team and we've conceded as many goals as them. Honestly, I'm starting to think what's going on in the minds of, of Alexander Isak and Bruno G. But back on what I was saying, you can't really slack Dan Byrne. It's not him who picks the lineup. When you're playing Dan Byrne, you know he's 10 foot odd. You know he's going to get skinned by these fast wingers. It's not his fault. He's born that way. Do you know what I mean? He is born that way. He can't help that whatsoever. He can't just go and put on fast boots. And when he does play, this is what I like about Dan Byrne. He has that jolly heart. He puts his he puts his absolute heart into it. He works his socks off. And that's what I love Dan Byrne for. He's sliding all over the shop. Not his fault that he can't exactly match the pace of these 19-year-old kids. But however, on to the other favourite, shall we say, Sean Longstaff. I absolutely hate going in on this lad. I've said it about five times now. But he's a jolly. If there's anyone you want to do good in your teams, it is a Geordie. But when he's getting picked week in, week out for these absolutely pathetic performances, right? And look, people are going to be angry by that, but I am sticking at my guns, right? Sean Longstaff's performances recently have been absolutely abysmal, anonymous, atrocious. Three years. It's certainly fair to say that he's not been playing as an A recently. I can't actually see a benefit to his game. Going forwards, he hasn't benefited us. Going backwards, he hasn't benefited us. When he gets the ball, it looks as if he just... He, when he's passing it, he's so sloppy. When he's on the ball, he's so weak. He's fallen over. He doesn't go into challenges. 
He doesn't help her in the air. He, yet again, he doesn't help going forwards or backwards. What is the job of this midfielder? And I'm not just saying that he was the only bad midfielder against Chelsea because them two, Bruno and Joe, were pretty bad. But it's been going on for so long now. He's honestly been anonymous in every single game. And I tell you something, there's a 17-year-old kid on that bench who can absolutely... Do you know I'm not even going to say a match. That's actually probably offensive to Lewis Miley. His performances as a 17-year-old kid who's just come straight out of that academy, which has been so bad recently... Uh, recently it's been so bad for a very very long time it's not been looked upon whatsoever if any top teams wanted Lewis Miley they would have got him because we were an absolute car crash of an academy he's been performing 10 times the player that Sean Longstaff has physicality as well this 17 year old kid has been putting in more physical challenges he's been getting stuck in there he's been getting forwards and backwards much better and being more effective in that way than Sean Longstaff it's set in stone he's the better midfielder going forwards he's a better midfielder going backwards physically he's better in the air he's better this kid is a full-on talent, and I know you've got to sort of nurture. No, that's my fault. There. Yeah, I know you've got to sort of nurture a seventeen-year-old kid, but at the same time, he is now a professional footballer. If he wants this, and I am going to say this, look, we are going to get better with every single season from now on. I really do believe that. If he wants to take his chance to become an ingrained Newcastle United footballer right now, because let's be real, when Tonali comes back next season, he's taking that right centre midfield uh, position without a doubt. If Lewis Miley wants to take that ingrained Newcastle United uh, slot in, his, in the team right now, he has to take his chance now. It's no good just saying he's a kid because he wouldn't have been putting the performances at the Parc de Pro in the Champions League away. No 17-year-old kid who isn't up to it doesn't play in them games and there's one more which I did want to say I've seen many people say it for a very long time there's no plan b now me personally I didn't quite understand what on earth is a plan b now of course I did pretty much know what it means but what is the context what is the the concept of a plan b does that mean switching formation does that mean a, a second lineup now my sort of figuration of no plan b is that we feel have that fight that ambition that passion that intensity that tenacity what we had last season to go into games when we fall behind and the confidence just goes all like literally it just we drop to the floor now we we weren't like that the last time we came from a losing position to actually win the game was nearly a full calendar year ago 11 months ago against a team who are now in the championship Southampton at home we won 3-1 they took the first goal by Stuart Armstrong in the 43rd minute Jesus Christ how do I remember that? that? I swear to God, that's actually off the top of my head. How on earth do I remember that? But anyways, yes. Um, wow, I've just I've kind of put myself through my paces there. Bloody hell. But anyways, you get what I mean. And there's a lack of that sort of mentality in Newcastle United at the minute. And it's really worrying. Because I never thought I'd, I'd actually be coming out here and saying negative things like this about the club. Because I absolutely hate to say it. I love this club with my entire heart. Honestly, I do it. It literally my whole life. I absolutely bleed black and white in. And I just, I don't like saying stuff like this. Because you only want to say positive stuff. But when players aren't performing up to par. When they aren't playing for the badge. Which is really what's annoying me. If we, if we go to Man City on the weekend. We absolutely get stuck in at every tackle. We drive up the pitch with pace and ambition. I won't be angry. Of course, it's Manchester City. Let's be real right now even in the match preview I will say we're not expecting a win but if they go out there and of course we had that famous ban I don't really like saying it but we want a team that tries we haven't had that we haven't had that recently. We didn't get it against Chelsea. We didn't get it against Blackburn. We were getting outplayed and outfought by a championship team, not to mention a championship team relegation battling. And of course, Wolves at home, I honestly think. Wolves were just pathetic in that game. They were really, really poor. And Newcastle United got a fair few gifted goals, shall we say. But look, it's really worrying at the minute. But how safe is anyhow to end it all for me? He is safe. I, de I definitely, it's, it's a no-brainer, I definitely give him to the end of the season, 110%, why on earth would we sack him now, that pretty goes with much without saying, next season though, when Sandro Tonali's back, if we stay injury free, we can make more signings, we we've got this concept of what happens this season, we need to learn off that, if this season happens again, we've got no cup run, we're out of all Europe, we don't get Europe again next season, I think it is going to start to look very, very worrying. But for right now, and of course next season, for me personally, he is very, very safe. I'm going to say it one more time. I absolutely adore Eddie Howe. I don't want another man managing this club. I, I, I adore everything about him. Honestly, I do. But he needs to stop being so stubborn playing these players like Sean Longstaff at the minute. I want Sean Longstaff to be on good form, but he's just not doing it. He's had eight or nine games where he's done this in a row now. Honestly, absolutely pathetic and it's just really getting on my nerves. But there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's not a video I wanted to make whatsoever. It's not normally like me. I'm normally the most positive bundle of energy you'll ever see. 
But um, it just hasn't been good at the minute. You let me know down below if you agree with what I said. Like the video if you do enjoy. And of course, I'll see you in the next one. And we will have that match preview for Manchester City. I was going to go down to the game. But honestly, lads, I've just fought myself. I, I had my ticket as well. I've sold it back to the club uh, with resale. Honestly, I just... I, I don't want to go now. I, d I don't want to go. If we actually put out the same performance, like not trying, not showing that ambition, which is all we want. If we don't do that against Man City, honestly, I, I don't think I'll waste my money. I actually don't think I'll waste my money. So there probably will be a live watch around for that as well. But anyway, see you later, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video hasn't been all doom and gloom. Thing has crossed in the next one. It's a lot more positive. But I love you, ladies and gentlemen. See you all in the next one. I've been Jordy Josh. Go and enjoy your day.